Hello, and welcome back to Let's Play Deadfire with me, Break It Dawn. Before we speak to Dario, I did forget to go over one ability on Kadu's Skull. It has Heavy Shard, which gives 3 Deflection, and it improves with the Athletic skill. Currently it is providing 5.8 Deflection. It has a base of 3, so you get about 1 Deflection for every 4 points into Athletics. Okay. And then for Takehu, I was thinking, his Water Shaper's Focus has this Bounce Attack, a Leaping Arc. The Rod's Modal has that AoE effect. I need to pay attention next time we're in combat. I want to see if the Bounced Attack also has the AoE effect. <laughs> if so, that's a really cool synchronization. But for now, let's give Dario the what good news. Uh, Dario leans toward you. His leg brace is squeaking. So about the cornet of waves. A most agreeable topic. Or so I hope. He draws his hands together and regards you over long, tented fingers. I found a mosaic in a temple of Andra deep in the old city. Gallarde, you watchers truly are workers of miracles. He claps, and a figure waiting by the door scurries into the narrows. What's your interest in Ukaizo? He smiles, but he fidgets madly with the gold at the hem of his tunic. The mosaic is an ancient work of art. Such marvels must be preserved. His fingers continue working at his hem. You're way too interested in this find, and in keeping it a secret, for this to be about art. A small gold thread comes away in his fingers. He frowns at it. Let us discuss your payment instead. A suitable enough topic, no? He clears his throat and produces a blunderbuss. After a brief pause, he whirls it around and holds it out to you. Never let it be said that Dario does not pay a fair price. Indeed, I'd hate for anyone to say that. He gives you a respectful, if strained, smile and nods to one of his attendants who produces a bag of coin. Now, allow us to put the question of money to rest. It is an unseemly topic to linger on. Let's discuss something else. What do you require? A farewell. A moment, I almost forgot. He takes the needlework from the table and unfurls it. It's larger than it initially looked. Bergam Blanca. Take it and indulge my vanity. He hands you a lovingly crafted flag. It is not as grand as the sails I once made, but my fingers are ever restless. What do you require? A most agree- Alright, so he gave us... Kitchen stove. It's a blunderbuss. Exceptional, hurried, minus 15% reload speed, and grants wild shot. With no regard for proper reloading technique or suitable ammunition, shots become a mix of unburnt powder and debris. Reloading is quicker and easier, and the projectiles bounce to nearby targets. So minus 15% reload time, and range attacks bounce one time for 15 seconds. Terrell Tyrand, dwarf captain of the Valian privateer Karak Firado Viello learned well the deadly business of deck-to-deck -deck combat over his long years of violent plunder. The blunderbuss, his boarding crew's favorite weapon, was well suited to the task of sweeping an enemy deck of opponents, but reloading such a weapon was darnably slow in the heat of combat. Tayro, a capable gunsmith, set forth to improve his own weapon. He needed a firearm that could be loaded quickly, and had to be able to, in his words, fire anything, even the gosh darn kitchen stove. In that endeavor, he was successful. The gun he crafted could accommodate just about any type of ammunition, as long as it fit down the trumpet-like barrel. Tayro was known to load nails, forks, and even coins into the gun. And a particularly grisly recollection, after suffering a near-fatal gunshot wound to the face, he is said to have rammed a handful of his own broken teeth into the trusty weapon before shooting his attacker dead. Tayro, aged, scarred, and battle-weary, eventually retired. Ill-suited to a life ashore, he fell in hard times and was forced to pawn the weapon that had saved his life many times over. 
Both he and the weapon faded into obscurity. Alright, we can get Thunderous Report. The copious powder load creates a blast that hits all targets in a cone, inflicting burn and crush damage, knocking them back, and dazing them. The Wand Barrage is an upgrade to Wild Shot. So reload time goes from minus 15% to minus 20%. A range attack bounces an extra time, and it gives you plus 10% damage for 15 seconds. Everything and anything, plus 5% damage as Slash, and 5% damage as Crush. And Frantic Reload upgrades Hurried to minus 25% reload time. Okay. Mm, sure. That might be something that's worth giving to Seraphin. Instead of dual wielding, we can give him a blunderbuss that reloads very quickly. So he can keep pumping out damage and build up his focus a little faster. Right, let's head back to Serpent's Crown. I thought Juana didn't believe in personal property. Yet you've brought quite the assortment of leather necklaces. Akira, just so. But not all of them go around my neck. In that case, perhaps you could remove them from my sleeping berth. Oh, it is no burden, my friend. You are free to borrow one. All right, let's go to Muhai's estate. Each island in this miniature model has been carefully sculpted, lined with carved rings that indicate height. At last. Akira, I have waited a second lifetime. Various unfinished letters lie scattered across the desk. You catch fragments of a meandering apology, largely obscured by spilled ink. Read that before. Right, that's new, I think. We've read that before. All right, uh, the rise of the Cypher Rangas. The line of succession in a Hwana tribe is malleable to change. One shrine remains constant. Ataru warriors possessing strength, leadership, and wisdom make a natural choice for Rangas. The Kahanga diverged from this pattern centuries ago. Instead of choosing from accomplished fighters or hunters, the Kahanga looked to the most intellectual and tactical Mataru born. Recent Kahanga generations have embraced this uncommon practice by favoring ciphers and their leadership. Some believe the development to be in reaction to the spread of foreign influence in the Deadfire. But the tradition stretches farther than most credit. Onikaza II, latest of the Cypher Rangas, seems determined to not be the last of the Cypher Rangas as she clings to diminishing Kwana sovereignty in the region. Rising where other tribes floundered, the Kahanga are praised for keen political maneuvering and endurance in the face of relentless trials. All that remains to be seen is how much one Cypher can endure. No one to check up on her, I guess. At Muhai's remains, the lifeless body of a Juana woman recovered from an estate in Serpent's Crown. Let's not pick it up yet. Let's we'll speak to the spirit first. I've got it. We got Evie. Oh, 
While Eevee is following you around, you get a bonus to Resolve and Resolve Affliction Resistance. Also, the duration of Resolve Afflictions applied to your party is reduced. There you are. The spirit tilts her head, considering you. After a moment, she reaches a hand towards you. Reach out your hand. Your hand passes through hers. She lets out a soft, sighing sound. It draws her hand back. I did not expect to wait so long for Rikuhu's messenger. Or have you come as Barret's usher? The foreigners twist even our gods. Should you not be a dwarf? I'm not the usher. I'm a watcher. Akira, I have not met one before. Nor will I again, I think. But you are here to take me away, are you not? Well, I refuse to go. Never will I move from this place until justice is done. She stamps her foot soundlessly. I follow Magrin's way. Yet sickness took me before my time. I died alone and without honors. It must be put right. My body cannot be left here to rot, forgotten. I feel it there like an itch. Who were you? I have been many things. And in performing my duties, I brought honor to my caste and to my kin. A sea captain. A great explorer. Trusted advisor to the queen herself. Now, that is before I left the sea for the mountains to make maps and guide others. Chief Navigator. That is what I made of myself. Do you know where you are? I can see nothing in this place of death but distant lights. But I feel I must be close to where I died. I have not taken one step since the darkness came. What's the last thing you remember? The sickness. Days of it. Lying in my own filth as the disease withered me. I passed from wakefulness to sleep with every breath. But I knew it once when it was over. Is that why you haven't moved on? I could help you. Of course. Some kind of mistake was made, and now Magrin will put it right. I thank you. Please, search my home. My body cannot be far. Have you found it? Akira, I hope I have not rotted away. I found a body in the bed. I assume it's yours. Yes. To think, a Mataru of the Kahunga tribe left to die alone and forgotten. Unthinkable. It shouldn't be too hard to arrange funeral rites. No, not so difficult now that you are here to carry my body. Take my body to the Temple of Magrin in the Sacred Stair. There is a great fire there that burns eternally. Burn my body there, so that it may be dedicated to Magrin in death. I cannot pass from this life until all is in order. Are you sure this is what you want? Of course. When all is done, Magrin will light a path for me. Or else, if I must face a final test of my navigator's skill, I will impress her. Huh? Right. Hmm? I will follow your light. The brazier awaits in the sacred stair. Okay, we can knock this out real quick. Just a hop and a skip across Nekataka.
Incense? Offerings for the temple? Each obstacle is a challenge we must answer. These are whetstones that sharpen us into fine blades. Muhai has passed. I'd like to commit her body to the flames. Muhai? The priest's calm demeanor is shattered by his hissed utterance. He glances around you both. Do you know what you do? This woman you carry, she cannot receive such rites. You risk the queen's anger. Muhai has broken with Wahana. The queen has forbade that any should have contact with her. Akira? She would be banished to the Undercity if not for her sickness. And now that has finished her. What does that mean? The sharing of resources among the tribe. For what do we let the Mataru rule us if not to dispense Wahana in fairness? Takeu sighs through his nose. A group of the Wapua came to seek Muhai's counsel. For she was known as a great navigator. Muhai was of the Oweki before she came to Nekataka. The Oweki and Wapua were enemies for many years, before Queen Onikaza's time. The Muhai misled the hunting party, and they were lost. All of us are Kahanga now. To harm Wapua is to harm Oweki. As Muhai turned her back upon her kin, so we were commanded to turn ours upon her. The queen would have us join our tribes into one raised fist. She could not let Muhai's crime stand. This is the highest skill check we've seen, right? In dialogue, anyway. So it was a political decision. I say, it was done for the good of our people. The traitors, they make war upon themselves. Each dousing another's flame, they are reduced to embers. And I say your queen is a shrewd leader. You should consider yourselves fortunate. He nods, really impressed. She died alone. Isn't that enough? So too did she act on her own, against her own people. She does not deserve the honor of walking with the gods. Can she not redeem herself? Muai is dead. She has lost her final battle. Who says one's chance for redemption ends with death? For some, it's only the beginning. Come. Give me the body. I will bury her beyond the great city walls. It is the best that I can do. Is there no other way? You are not of the Kahanga tribe. For what do you do this? I mean, option three is true. Her spirit promised me a reward. Akira, outsider, have you no shame? Selfishness sealed her fate. It will do the same for you. No, I'll do as she asked and burn her body. You would defy the word of our queen? Now the priest looks down at you. His lined face twisting into a solemn frown. Well, very well. What should I do? Come. Give me the body. I will bury her beyond the great city walls. It is the best that I can do. Is there no other way? You are not of the Kahanga tribe. For what do you do this? I feel sorry for her. And I as well. Muhai has brought great sorrow upon herself. You would defy the word of our queen? No, but I'm saying you should. Or else. I will not spill more blood for Muhai's sake. But no, this foolishness will bring you only sorrow. Will do. Don't care. The heat given off by the massive brazier is almost unbearable. Its flame... Its flame burns nearly to the height of a man, licking along the edges of the metal as if eager to escape. Place Muhai's remains in the flames. You heave your grim burden into the brazier, where it lands with a scattering of embers. 
The body burns with unnatural swiftness in the flames. Reduce the ash within what seems to be mere moments. I hope this works. It is done. I can feel it. I am certain of it. My essence returns to me. You can detect no change in Muhai's spectral form now that her corpse is gone. All the same, she raises her hands to the height of her eyes, examining them. You have greater loyalty within you than those of my own blood, Watcher. You have freed me. I don't think she promised me treasure. But I'll nod. When I was yet not too sick to rise, and had hope of leaving the city, I hid away a jewel with which I could buy passage, climb the temple steps, and search among the pillars. You will find it behind a loose stone. I will not sail again. Perhaps you can make use of it. I will find my way from here. Amira's winds blow sweet upon you, Watcher. May you always find what you seek. You know what would have been cool? There's a way to recruit her into your crew as a navigator. Huh? Mm -hmm. Alright. She said something about behind the pillars. Did she mean? Oh, there it is. Now let's check our reputation with the Juana now. Okay, we're still at one. That's fine. I think we did the right thing there. Plus, we gave her my word that I would. And as a gold pack knight, didn't have much choice. On it. Each obstacle is a challenge we must answer. These are whetstones that sharpen us into fine blades. Alright, back to Serpent's Crown again. So I wonder if I could have just ignored the High Priest there and just interacted with the Flame to begin with. I assume that he would have tried to stop you. Oh, plus we should get some reputation back with uh, the Juana here. So I am going to give them back the Epic of uh, Harapo. Huh? You return. What say, friend? Give her the artifact. I retrieved the tablet from Archimere's vault. Akira, you've restored to us a piece of our history. She cradles the tablet with care. The queen thanks you, my friend. We are a step closer to... Nate trails off as a winged, leathery figure in the distance draws closer to you. You the Watcher? He prods you to get your attention. Yeah, what's it to you? Arkamir, the Great Master, has returned. Invites you to join him at the estate. Says you know where that is. The imp lets out a harsh, discordant chuckle, holding his claw in front of his mouth to hide a mischievous grin. What's this about? Oh no! Master doesn't tell us imps anything. But the way he draws out each word suggests that the imp is practicing sarcasm. I'll tell him I'll be there. I won't need to. He already knows. Find Master in his study. Don't be late. The imp winks at you and flutters away. Well, that was faster than I anticipated. I had hoped for more time to work with the queen on her formal apology, but I will have to accelerate our plan. She frowns. Clearly disturbed. Thank you again, truly. 
This may be our most meaningful step towards Ukaizo. We just have to pray that Archimir doesn't put hexes on his belongings. She handles the tablet with care. Farewell. Well, we cleaned out his place real good. Maybe he wants to tell us how impressed he is. Thank you again. The Harappo epic is in the right hands at last. Okay, so I don't remember how much... Yeah, it says... Major reputation gained with Juana. But it looks exactly the same. Yeah, sure. Alright, well, let's return to Archimere's Manor and see what he has to say. Hopefully he keeps things cordial, because he won't be the first Archmage that we've slain. If he gets a little uppity. We've taken out Lengroth, Consulhot. Are those the only two? I know it wasn't the original uh, Lengroth, but it was the original Consulhot. And we turned him into a pet. I trust you had no trouble finding the place. Sighing. Archimere glances up from a roll of parchment. He takes up a quill and draws several lines across a calendar entry, digging the nib hard enough that scratching fills the silence. Nekitaka is either a testament to the ancient Huana's love of labyrinths, or their hatred of straight lines. He grimaces and rearranges several of the objects situated around his desk. Age, not the Juana, as at the bones of the city at crooked angles. Sadly, I did not invite you here for a discussion of city planning. Well, you shouldn't have brought it up then. I warn you to stay your hand and treat with me better than you did poor Consulot. Awesome. All right, we need to get a reaction for that. He pauses to study your reaction with interest. Say nothing. Sighing. Grabs his knuckles on the top of his desk. Flengrath. Gone as well. Your dealings with the circle are stained darkest crimson. <laughs> Option two is really funny, but not necessarily in character. Say nothing. But let us get to the business of the hour, shall we? He opens his palms. My estate was recently burgled. My vault breached. He sighs, drawing a sheaf of papers closer and then pushing them away. Say nothing. As I suspected. At the Circle's behest, I'm expected to show restraint in these dealings. His nails dig into the armrest of his chair. A tearing sound fills the silence between you. If you imagine that imp blood is easy to remove from carpet, I invite you to clean up after yourself. I am less pleased about the Harappo epic resting in the hands of those who lost it once before. Just keep saying nothing. <laughs> the Circle of Arch Magi wishes for us to put this unpleasantness in the past with a gesture of good faith. When he finishes his air quotes, his elbow knocks over an inkwell. Archimere simply glares at the spilled ink until it retreats back into its receptacle. <laughs> I'm gonna keep saying nothing to see if I can get under his skin. The Circle has expressed concerns about a certain mobile deity. The Deadfire is a fragile place 
and a blundering soul drain like Aethus can damage more than just castle keeps. Such as? Use a modicum of your imagination. It isn't our desire that you apprehend the deity. That simply isn't practical. We need your help in preparing for the worst possible outcome. I should have stayed silent there again, but it's fine. Archimere presses his thumb down on a spider crawling across his desk. His upper lip pulls back with the delight. Normally, the circle's involvement constitutes the worst possible outcome. Or have you already forgotten the Blackwash Falls incident? Aleth watches Archimere through narrowed eyes. Kalakoth replaced the water. What more do you desire? An apology? Archimere turns his nose up at Aloth. What can I accomplish that you can't? We. Oui. Archimere stops himself, his fingers splayed on the desk in the midst of a fidget. You are only involved because it is advantageous for knowledge of the Circle's involvement to remain discreet. The wizard Bikana installed an observatory due northeast of Nekataka. For your absolution, the Circle asks that you locate her research. What are you hoping to learn from the stars? That the Circle's concerns are utterly unfounded, of course. His eyebrow arches up. No doubt you'll recognize the appropriate documents. You have an eye for valuables. <laughs> Why ask me and not Bikarna? She vanished from academic research, and therefore her livelihood. All signs point to her lab being abandoned. As long as I'm compensated for the work. Were the spoils of my estate too meager? Absolutely not. <laughs> His brow furrows. Fair warning. A vessel flying the sigil of the torn bannerman set a course for the observatory. Frowning, Archimere sifts among his correspondence, so he sets upon the one he seeks. I have every reason to believe they travel armed. They're elite mercenaries. We, say, we faced off at the siege of Craghold. Did I inquire after your personal history? <laughs> Archimere sneezes into his sleeve and grimaces. My interest begins and ends at a single point. That someone of great means desires abandoned arcane research. Research which we <clears throat> disregard it. He clears his throat and glances away. Come back alive. Or not at all. Now, if you don't mind, I have a manor to restore. And a household staff to replenish. <laughs> He bites his lower lip and narrows his eyes at you. I've got it. Okay. Well, I'm going to call it here. Uh, next episode, we'll try to conversate with Archimere one more time. I'm curious what Ficina has to say now that Archimere is back as well. We have a few things to sell. So we'll swing by the dark cupboard and offload some of our inventory. Hmm? And follow up with some folks. Because she helped us. And uh, Ifrin also helped us. So I'm wondering if they got punished for it as well. But for now, thanks for watching. I hope to see you guys in the next one.